All right, Tracy, you're the, you know, great way to top off the week. Uh, why don't we get right to uh, what's happening in the Middle East? Um, let's take it to the extreme. That's me. What happens uh, to oil if the Straits of Hormuz get jacked up? Well, I obviously that would be a major, major problem. Same with the Suez Canal. That said, I do not think either one of those choke points will get get closed for any reason. First of all, Suez Canal basically has its own army. Um, and then also the Egyptian army. And Egypt makes way too much money from that, over $11 billion a year just in transit fees. Okay. And so I definitely don't think that will be shut down. And as far as the Strait of Hormuz is concerned, um, the problem with that is it's a closed choice choke point, meaning you can't go around it. You can go around the Suez. It just right. takes a lot longer. Um, that said, I don't think that, you know, I, I mean, I, I just don't see it happening, realistically speaking, uh, because, you know, Iran needs money right now and they need to ship their oil. So. OK, what if it's not their choice? Well, I don't. I mean, really, they're the only ones that would shut it down. Nobody else is going to shut it down. Everybody wants. Oh to sell, well, I mean, they don't, I, uh, right? They would shut it down if they were attacked. Yeah, but I, I just don't foresee that happening. I mean, I just I think out out of every is that, scenario, is that, whole, is that I hope? Think, I think out of no, I, I think out of every scenario, though, those two are the very very least that can happen. Okay, um, but again. As more countries are drawn into this conflict, right? We just bombed Syria again. Right. That's um, what I mean. The problem is going to be, you know, do, you know, first, are any oil installations hit? That's going to be a problem, right? Okay. And then uh, second of all, I mean, everybody's trying, all those countries that are producing oil are making money. And so far it's business as usual. Nothing has been disrupted. Um, your real concern in that area is, is gas because they just shut down the Tamar uh, gas fields off the coast of Israel uh, because of heightened tensions. Although it would only affect the markets regionally as, uh, for instance, Jordan, which is a major importer, uh, but you know, it, it wouldn't affect global markets as much. Okay. That, so I think right natural. now, I mean, right now it's good. Obviously we have big geopolitical risk. What, you know, I'd be yeah. watching is to see if any oil installations get hit for any reason, or okay. if, you know, Saudi Arabia, you know, gets angry and decides to, you know, stop some oil exports. But um, okay. again, I think that this, the two waterways Wait. are okay yeah. for now. Yeah. We won't know until there's an incursion by Israel to retaliate. Will we, Right. Uh, what the reaction from the uh, Arab streets going to be? We already know what the reaction is. So, uh, you know, this is something that I, I talked about and, you know, back here in natural gas, it was like comatose. And right put for in, months put and like, months yeah it, you know it was like a if it was an ekg it'd be someone in a coma um but real nice saucer bottom that we broke yeah. out of a few weeks ago and the breakout seems to be holding could this be the sleeper play because uh, europe has recency bias because they had a warm winter last oh, year and maybe they're not going to be as lucky yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been saying since, since September, before the breakout, even yeah. you know, to to kind of watch this market, and you know, okay. it could be a play. You know, we could get a nice squeeze uh, this winter you... if there's any problems with Europe. They're in right. big trouble, and uh, because the market's so short right now, yeah, you could easily get a squeeze. And just like a retracement, I mean, let's say it's a, you know, it's a secular bear market, but, you know, we've come down from 10 to two, that's eight bucks. So even a 38% uh, retracement is three, takes it up to five, which is, you know, previous support in the breakdown. Um, yeah, I was going to say, playing I think... a, are, are you buying natural gas stocks? 
So uh, yes, uh, um, individual uh, equities. Uh, I'm not. Right. I, I don't have a. I don't have the stomach anymore to, to trade to the trade futures, futures market. On yeah. That one. Well, you you because uh, well, it's a the widow maker, not the widower maker. Well, so exactly. I, I, you know, and right. and I, you know, I would tell everybody really be careful of those double and triple levered ETFs on this market too. Yeah. I can't stay away. So uh, what what issues? Um, what do you like in the natural gas arena? So I like producers that are distributors as well as that, that not only produce, but I'll also have uh, distribution. So I like okay. like Oxy and Oxy. Um, Chesapeake, CHK. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. Okay, so... Uh, uh, that covers uh, a bit of the energy patch. You know, Trace, you were on to the uranium potential bull market a long time before the market woke up to it. Uh, and there were, you know, star performers. Uh, I know that you, I keep it up here for you. It's, uh, what is it? Oh, what we're really looking at. I Leroy. had... Yeah, I had Uroy, right. which I said, well, I which I still do. That's a very long term hold for me, right? Um, Ches Chesapeake or any of the other uranium, place? so CCJ, yeah, that's to make uh, yeah, yeah, and then okay. there's also the Sprat ETF, okay, of uranium, okay, so that's uh, here. I think this is a sprout. Nice move in, uh, there it is. Bull move. So continuation of this, so the world's gonna finally realize that we really don't have many other options besides um, nuclear at this point. I think that, you know, I think we're headed into a multi-year uh, bull market for uranium. I mean, okay. we have the same problem, we have a decade of basically no capex while right. we still been having build out right yeah. and then now the west is kind of waking up again to uranium and you you have to understand that it takes a long, long time to get to get this stuff out of the ground right you got a permitting yeah, issue that's the impossible got... part isn't it to get permitted because exactly a, so you got to get so permitting. anti green you know and it, Exactly. And you got to dig it up. And so, you know, I, I think we're headed into, again, a multi-year bull market for, for uranium. You know, I don't know if I would necessarily, if you're not already in it, I'm not, I don't know if I would necessarily chase it here and, you know, maybe wait for a bit of a pullback. Um, but, you know, I think again, for long-term, I like it. Okay. You're still uh, in GFI? You're still on Goldfield? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two, huh? What is it? Two, three, two years now. I've been holding on in this. Yes. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this, really. How many <laughs> interviews do you do where the host has the symbols up to follow your trades? Oh, oh and that remembers what I'm actually vested in. I'm very impressed. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so uh, yeah, gold. I mean, this huge move in gold. Do you think this time it's going to stick? We'll see. I mean, I think that. You know, I think there's a lot here with gold and, and not only geopolitical tensions, but, you know, I think that, you know, I'd like to see uh, like a run up again to that yeah. triple top, that weekly triple top. Yeah. Base, base kind of, well, it's all, almost a triple top, just over yeah, 21, 30 something. Right there. Yeah. So I yeah. think. I think next time, you know, we could definitely break it. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. There's still a lot of, you know, people are still worried about a recession. Uh, we've got obviously yields going crazy. Um, and so I think that, you know, I think that we had yeah. this kind of a surprise move to the upside. And if you actually look at it positioning, so fast. Yeah. if you look at positioning and it was actually a perfect weekly support, it hit perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And moving average to the weekly. Yeah, it right was, there. I mean, it was, I mean, it was a perfect, perfect technical move. Um, but the thing is, is that even with this 8% rise, really, if you look at positioning, 
no, there's no FOMO yet. So this okay. could go a lot yeah. higher. That's okay. Got that. So uh, the shares um, aren't certainly aren't acting as well. Uh, I mean, you have a decent miner, but uh, even like you know, Newmont's uh, best of breed. You wouldn't know you had a bull move in gold, would you? Well, yeah, that, the that's GDX what... is a little better. You got this kind of pop on on the move, but we're ha actually having a negative week here. Why do you think the miners are underperforming the bullion? Most of them. Most of them. Well, GFI is doing well, but um, I don't. You know, again, it's you know, it's yeah, tough market. Mining is. Is, is it because energy and costs are eating into their bottom line? Oh, absolutely. Okay. For sure. I mean, mining in general is very energy intensive. Okay. And so, of course, that's going to, you know, hurt them. Newmont's got, you know, they're going to be, they're having, they're going to be in a merger right now. So might be one to look okay. at. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, in, you have to be very very careful with gold miners, in my okay. opinion. <laughs> yeah, I think there's one more good shot down. Uh, I wanted to ask you your view on the dollar. So we, you know, we've gotten to the 50% level was, you know, 107.20, uh, a little over that a few weeks ago, kind of moving sideways. Uh, dollar have more juice left in it. Uh, it could absolutely, you know, I would think that if it does, we probably top out around 110, 112. And Janet oh, Yellen, okay. you know, if we go in that high, I'm just saying Janet Yellen's yeah. going to have to intervene again as she did when we hit that 113 because it absolutely crushes emerging markets. Okay. So uh, you'll just skip over the 618 at 109. Uh, 111 and a half is about 78 six back trace. So I'm just saying that would, if be, it, that would be it, a subpar uh, euro, I believe, if we got up there. Yeah, I'm just saying if it gets up there, that's where they're going to have to intervene again. Oh, OK, I don't um, think they want it to get that high. Nobody wants it to get that high. It's bad for emerging markets. It's even yeah. bad for Europe. So, um, you know, yeah. you have to understand that the Treasury intervenes when they have to. OK. So uh, we've had a nice sell-off in equities from 4,600 to uh, 4,130. I know we've had some zigs and zags, but um, there have been some, uh, you know, pretty big breaks and things like Nvidia. It's going to be higher today, and and Apple, and until today, Amazon, and then you get good earnings like Microsoft had great earnings, but gave it all back. Um, do you think this, uh, you know, we've taken out 4,200. Is this a correction or is there something more sinister behind this? And that's the million dollar question, right? It is. <laughs> so, it is. You know, and it's the, it's hard with kind of the mag seven selling off, you know, I think, you know, people yeah. are, that had They're a huge. Boot Hill. Hey, Trace, I, I went to one of their funerals. They're all up in Boot Hill now. They okay. were slow on the draw. Okay. They were still on the draw of the Mag 7. I mean, look at Google. There aren't many of them left. I don't know. So I think, the, yeah, I think that, what you, I mean, I think there's a lot of profit taking right now because really they've outperformed this whole year, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, they're obviously they're weighted so heavily in the index. It's bringing down, yeah. bringing down the index, right? Yeah. So could there be a lot more left of uh, reversion to the mean? Uh, I mean, trade? there could be. I mean, watch yields, you know. Okay. I, I mean, will, that's uh, that's really going to govern the market. I mean, if you watch, um, you know, it, just even intraday, ES and the 10-year yeah. are like in lockstep. Okay. Not yesterday. Not yesterday, Does, but uh, not and not every day. No, but. Okay. And I mean, like tenure, a, not not the yields, not yields. I mean, the te tenure, the actual okay. U.S. Okay. Treasury. All right. And and like <clears throat> TLT, too. So um, they're trying to carve out a bottom, in my view. We could get another low. Uh, do you think yields are peaking? Um, I, I, Perhaps. Yeah. So, OK, so that's going to be the big uh, test. If yields drop and the market keeps dropping, 
Then well, if the yields American... drop, I think if yields drop, I think the market will bounce. Okay. Because <laughs> so when I say they're have... in lockstep, I mean if you're looking at yeah. yields inverse of what the market's doing, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I I would just look for a day when yields were down and it wasn't helping the market. Or the dollar was down and wasn't helping the market. I mean, I, yeah. Thing. I mean, obviously, it's not nothing's a one to one correlation. Yeah. So, but that's the market. You know, the higher yields go, the more pressure you're going to have on the equities markets right now. But you know, bad piece of people have really uh, said no recession, right? So if there's a there is a scenario where yields could drop, and the market could drop, uh, and that would be not all the earnings have been great and that we have a growth scare so that stocks could sell off on worries about earnings being compressed and rates can drop at the same time. And I think that would surprise a lot of people if that happens, don't you? Probably. Not me, but it, would, <laughs> <I'd> be, uh, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, it would surprise me if it happens. That's all, but it wouldn't surprise me. Um, where else? Uh, uh, where else? I know you like fertilizer stocks and agri you know, related uh, to agriculture. I was, yeah, I was. Uh, fertilizer was kind of the play of 2022. I haven't really done anything okay. with it since 2021, 22. Um, okay. You know, things look pretty calm in that market as it stands for right now. Okay. And uh, so that I think uh, uh, what's top of mind um going into the end of the year tracy how should we you know what should be our you know kind of our temperament well, obviously let's see if the fed uh raises rates this meeting or not it kind of okay. seems like they back themselves in a pause corner um based on what they've been saying over the last two weeks um so we'll see you know obviously that's something you're going to want to watch and then you know, see what if, uh, you know, they they tried to stage, a, you know, Santa rally into into okay. the end of the year. OK. Uh, when do they usually start? I think, well, I don't think anything will happen until, you know, no, after November 1st when we get the Fed decision. So, okay. you know, I would just wait to that and see how that pans out. Obviously, if they do a surprise rate hike, which would probably be only 25 basis points. But, you know, what's 25 basis points at this point? It's kind of useless, but you never know. OK, you ever hear the expression that the bears feast on Thanksgiving and the bulls in, on Christmas? I have not. OK, uh, well, uh, um, well, that's like their last meal before they go into hibernation. Ah, I got it. All right. So anyway, you could use it. I didn't in invent. <laughs> uh, there's nothing original <laughs> about you know Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. But uh, really, really appreciate you coming in on a Friday, Trace. And yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I uh, was uh, yeah. out of commission earlier this week. <laughs> we're we're human and. Uh, I'll get a hold of you later and we'll talk uh, during the winter. Uh, so I hope you have a great fall trading season in the meantime. And the whole team roots for you. You're one of our favorites, Trace. Absolutely. I love you guys over there. Thank you so much for having me on. I really All appreciate right. it. Have a great weekend. Everyone, have a great weekend. You could join the team in about, I don't know, 24 minutes for the morning edge and want to thank everyone. Hope we've added value to what you're trying to accomplish as a trader. It's not easy. And we'll see everyone next week. Good hunting. And don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Thanks again, Tracy. Thank and you. Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.